Hi guys, you guys have seen this before. This is actually the beginning of my scarab tutorial. Um, but because I lost a bit of my tutorial while I was editing, I have to re-show you how to use watercolors to make a colorful background on your stone. So you start off with matte black paint and then use your metallic watercolors with water and create whatever color background you want to make. I do mine in like a circular or oval. Um, this was for the scarabs, but it's the same thing for all of my other ones as well. Um, so if you see a, a beautiful background, it's usually because I've just done this with my watercolors. You're going to see one coming up. It's going to look a little different. <laughs> it looks different, but that's because I lost the beginning where I showed you how I did it. And I just used different colors. So there's like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, bit of purple. Uh, and I have resined my rock after I uh, did the watercolor background. And it's been actually sitting on my desk for quite a while. I wasn't sure what I was going to create on this beautiful stone. Uh, it's a perfect Lake Superior stone to begin with. And then I added this beautiful rainbow effect. Um, and it's just like a burst of color. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to figure out the best thing to paint on this beauty. And I've decided it's going to be magical mushrooms. Um, these are closely related to the fairies um, or fairy mushroom house if you haven't seen that. Um, we just want some beautiful magical mushrooms. Um, this will spruce up any garden, any room, any potted plant. Um, they're just gorgeous and if you're a fan of mushrooms anyway, um, there's a lot of artwork out there that have beautiful, whimsical, sparkling mushrooms and I just love them all so much. Um, I actually bought a booklet of scrap scrapbook paper um, and it's colorful and it's just color, colored and colored covered in mushrooms and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I have been inspired. <laughs> you guys might have seen me post uh, a rock that has mushrooms on it that's similar to this. Um, and then I started having everybody ask me for a tutorial. So I thought now would be the time. I've been off for a little bit. As you can tell, I probably don't sound quite right um, because we were down with the sickness. Um, so yeah, the entire household's been down and not every one of us has been sick, although my youngest did end up doing really well and he was only like sick for one night, uh, fever and sore throat. And other than that, he was great. And uh, But we've all been isolating and, you know, now it's gone through two more of us. So my husband is lucky. He's still doing okay. Knock on wood. Real wood. <laughs> if I have any here. Yes, I do. Um, but yeah, so we've all been sick. And um, it's, it's also very stressful when you're isolated at home. We don't have like a large support system where we are. And, uh, so we were relying on my husband's mother for getting our groceries and she's, uh, immune compromised as well as she suffers from fibromyalgia and she's always in a lot of pain. So it was kind of hard for us to even ask for help throughout this isolation period. Um, but thank goodness we are getting all better. So you could see that I've just kind of sketched out with some gold and filled it in with black because today we're going to be dotting. I love dotting and I haven't dotted in a little while. So we're going to have that beautiful, bold burst of color in the background that's going to accent these gorgeous mushrooms and make them look just a little bit more magical. Um, but we're going to dot the insides. We're going to fill them in once we have it all sketched out the way we want it. And you can slow this down or you can pause it. Um, you can skip uh, right to the end and take a look at the picture. That way you can get your shape on there properly in black and gold or black and silver, whatever you prefer. And then we can start filling it with color. 
Um, so right now I've got my shape. I have filled it all in with black. I've made sure I didn't lose any of my gold outline. And now I'm doing the gills underneath so we can kind of just imagine what the gills would look like underneath that mushroom cap. And I'm using gold as well, but if you make your lines too thick, wait for it to dry. And then you can go back in with black and thin out some of that gold so that you can see all those individual uh, mushroom gills. <laughs> Not fish gills, mushroom gills. Uh, when I did mushrooms before, I didn't know what these were called, but now I know because someone taught me. <laughs> So I'm making sure that each one, except for the one at the back, at the top uh, right, that one's not going to have gills because we can't see the underneath of it, but all the other ones do. And I'm going to do different colors. I'll be using some reds and some purples for, the, for these mushrooms. Um, and you can, if you're working on a resin surface like I am right now, um, you can easily get rid of your mistakes. So like I, I will, I'm used to it now. I usually just use my fingernail and like scratch off little bits that I didn't want there anymore. Or if it's still wet, you can literally just wipe it off with your finger. You might see me do that a few times. Um, but it's nice to have that shiny resin surface to work on because then you can make as many mistakes as you want. And you still have that gorgeous background that's not ruined. <laughs> so one of the biggest problems I've had in the past is wrecking my background after f completing it and making it perfect. And then I mess something up like it's a hummingbird or a flower or something. And, and I just make a real mess of it and then I can't fix the background. So this is one good thing about resining a stone and not knowing what you want to do with it quite yet because <laughs> then you can make lots of mistakes and you could change your mind halfway through and say you know what I'm gonna do a cat I'm not gonna do a mushroom <laughs> so I'm just making sure that I can see all those gills and if there's any thicker gold bits I'm fixing that and make sure you let everything dry first before you start filling it in with color and I apologize if I sound nasally or if I don't sound quite myself but I promise you I feel a hundred percent better than what I have in the last week so I'm going to make sure that all of this black is dry before I add any color um, pick out your colors you don't have to choose the same colors as me for your background or for your mushrooms um, because I have some red in the background and there is a little bit of purple back there too um, I'm gonna bring that red in and put it on the mushrooms like your uh, you, you see lots of red mushrooms but I'm gonna still make these really cute they're gonna be super cute um, but you can do blue mushrooms purple mushrooms orange mushrooms red whatever color you want you can do like little zentangle designs on the mushroom caps um, you can do rainbow colored mushroom caps with dots. It's completely up to you. I'm going to start off now that I have all my black and gold finished and it's drying as we speak up at the top of the mushrooms there. Um, but I'm going to add some color and I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. So I've, I've sketched on some grass. And some of the blades of grass are a bit thicker than others. The thicker ones are going to have light green and bright green um, on them. And the thinner ones are just going to have either light green or bright green. Just use a lighter green and a, and, a, and a darker green. That's all you have to do just to give it some, a little bit more pizzazz in the grass. <laughs> So I'm adding the bright green right now, and you'll notice that I'm using a very, very small dotted uh, utensil. It's actually a needle. It's called a dotting needle, and it's from uh, a nail salon. So instead of using one of these, you don't have to go buy one. Just get yourself some toothpicks because they work just as good. I'm doing little, little dots because I want to make sure that 
um, it fits into those little spaces, especially up around the mushroom caps where the gills are and the fine, thin blades of, of grass. You don't want to go outside the lines. You don't want to cover up your gold. So just use a toothpick. It does take a little bit longer when you're doing tiny little dots like that, but it will be worth it. I promise it'll look really, really pretty when it's done. So I've used bright green up until now. You just saw me wipe away some mistakes there uh, with my fingers. <laughs> but now I'm adding the lighter green, which is, I believe, like a, a lime green or uh, like a citrusy. I know it's one of those ones. Uh, very, very bright. And you can just see a little bit on the upper portion of the thick blades of, of grass. And you can put whatever you want around here. You can put like four leaf clovers or, you know, whatever you want to have with your mushrooms. I'm just doing simple, simple grass. That's all. You definitely don't have to use different shades of green in the grass, but it just kind of fancies it up just a little bit. I'm going to be using this dotting needle throughout the entire thing um, until the very end when I put some white uh, polka dots on the mushroom caps. Um, but yeah, just use a toothpick or one of your smaller dotting utensils. Um, either one will work. I've used toothpicks like since I started painting for my dots. So it's not something new. Now for the stem, because we're starting at the bottom, we're starting with the grass. Now we're going to do the stem of the mushroom and I'm using a mixture of white and camel. So I didn't quite add enough white. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to do the stems in this color. And then there's something right above the stem called the ring. And that's going to be pure white. And then we'll work on the gills. But for now, all of these nice thick stems are going to be this off-white, very, very, very lightened camel. And I'm just doing, making sure that I fill in everywhere that's all behind those blades of grass and make sure you stay uh, within the lines don't go outside the lines it's sometimes hard when when we have like all that grass and all those different stems coming out just use your imagination and you'll you'll understand if uh if you would rather start at the top on the caps and figure out what colors you want to do first. That's totally up to you. If you want to keep your caps black and then use watercolor on them, you can if you don't like dotting. Uh, there's lots of options here for you guys. So I wanted to come back with a bang. This is a long one and I apologize. I hope you're able to make it till the end uh, to see the, the finished results as well as I have some nice stuff on my desk that I want to show you. So there will be an episode of what's on my desk right before the resin reveal at the end of this video. So if you want to skip through and see what this turned out like to see if you really even want to bother painting with me, just skip on over. And if you want to try it, I'll be here when you're ready to, to go. So you can see I'm doing the ring now which is just what it's called technically on the mushroom, although it may not resemble, you know, a realistic mushroom ring. I'm doing just white in this area and I've sped it up so that you guys don't get bored, but all my stems are still that same color. And then it's white at the top where the ring is. And now I'm using slate gray mixed with camel and I'm gonna do some shading in those gills. So they're going to go from gray to more of a camel color. So you'll see that happen. It's going to speed up. You're not going to be able to work as fast as me. This did take a while. It took quite a few hours to get this done in between uh, looking after my family and, and not feeling as great myself. Um, it did take a while. So with all these little teeny weeny little dots, it does take a little bit longer. But once again, if you don't want to dot it, you don't have to. You can just paint it as normal. 
uh, or watercolor. Watercolor actually goes on there real fast if you're someone who's impatient with art. <laughs> um, but I love the look of tiny little dots creating something beautiful. So now I'm using Camel and I'm just filling in. We just did like the gray on the inner portion of the gills closest to the stem or the ring. And now on the outside closest to the rim of the cap, we are putting the camel color. And I'm gonna darken it a little bit more afterwards in that gray area, just close to the stem by adding a darker gray. I'm just gonna add some black to the gray. Uh, yeah, just so I can darken it a little bit more in the centers there of those under the gills. And then we will be outlining everything in black and then making sure that we didn't lose any of our gold. So throughout my stones, I'm usually outlining more than once. You guys can see that. Um, but I'm just fixing and going back over and making sure that we don't lose any of that spectacular gold. We also don't want to lose any of our dots we don't want to lose any of our black outline because that actually separates our mushrooms from that beautiful background. So the black outline for me is important and the gold for sure. <laughs> so like I said, I was going to do, I'm going to just darken that gray a little bit with some black so that I can make the gray area close to the stem just a little bit darker, but not too much. I don't want to change it too much. The black outline is going to separate everything as well. You'll notice a big change uh, in how it looks once we get that black outline on there. So go as slow as you need to go. You don't need to go as quickly as me. I've had a few years practice and this is also my second magical mushroom stone that I've done in the past couple of days because I made one and then everybody wanted a tutorial. <laughs> so I made another one. Now we are coloring the caps. I'm going to be using Engine Red, Berry Wine, and Eggplant. And there's my tattoo. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, sometimes I'm not paying attention to what's on the screen. So I'm starting off with my Berry Wine. It's a nice deep, deep, deep red. And I'm going to dot this using the same dotting tool that I've been using all along. Um, my dots are not perfect and they're definitely not all the same size uh, and some of them are attached together. I'm just coloring it in with dots. That's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to do a pattern. Um, I'm not trying to do all the same size or separate the same, uh, same bit apart. Uh, I'm just, I'm just dotting. I'm just filling it in with color. That's all I'm doing. So. I've used a little bit of that red and I'm using a little bit of eggplant now for the bottom part of the cap. And I'm just gonna kind of mingle in the, the red and the purple and then they just kind of look great together. They look like they were supposed to be like that, like united. <laughs> if you just mix them and mingle, dot them together. So now our beautiful mushroom cap has like an ombre effect from deep, deep, deep berry wine to eggplant purple. And this one is going to be deep berry wine right at the edge of the cap there. And then when we get closer to the tip or the top, we're going to use a brighter red, which is that engine red. This one here where it has no gills, it's going to be just eggplant purple. We might put some white polka dots on it afterwards, but for now, fill it in with purple. <laughs> this one here is going to be all red. And this one, red and bright red, engine red. You do what you want. Once again, uh, you choose the colors that you uh, want to work with, depending on what kind of background you decided to do. Um, but this is, this is what I'm doing. Now you're going to see where I'm outlining. Try not to lose your gold, but I will be going back over with some gold again because I did take some of it away. 
But if you work slowly and patiently, you probably won't have to outline it as many times as I do. <laughs> Just a little tip for you. I want to thank uh, all of you for being patient, waiting for more tutorials to come out. I will have a watercolor binder tutorial uh, coming for you today, I believe, or tomorrow, as soon as I can get it up. As soon as it's able to upload, it'll be up for you um, so that you guys can learn how to make your own watercolor paints, uh, just like the ones that I've used in the background of this rock uh, and many of my other ones as well. They're a lot of fun and uh, it just changes up the whole rock painting game. <laughs> uh, and if you don't want to make your own, I have lots going into my shop over the next couple of days. Uh, rocks and paint. So if you want to visit my Etsy shop, the link's in the description of this video. And also watercolor paint works amazingly well on natural stones, on paper, on black backgrounds of any kind. It looks super, super nice. And of course, on canvas, you can also do it. So I've got all of my white polka dots on a couple of them. Uh, everything's outlined. Now I just want to make it just a little bit more magical looking. So I've put a couple of dots of gold. And now I'm just dragging out some tails, kind of like little stars. Um, we're going to put some Swarovski crystals in the center of those before we resin. And it just kind of makes it look glittery and sparkly and magical and mysterious. I'm going to do a couple of gold dots just without tails. They're just gold dots. Glitter in the air. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> I'm going to let that dry, but I'm going to stick on some Swarovski crystals using some triple thick. Uh, I use triple thick to hold glitter in place. I use triple thick as a glue to hold my little sparkling Swarovskis. Uh, flat back crystals of any kind. I just use it for sequins or chunky glitter. Uh, basically my glue if I don't have any Mod Podge. So it's great for holding glitter in place as well. You guys have seen me use it lots of times. But for now I'm gluing on my Swarovskis. And once those are dry it's ready to resin. And those Swarovskis aren't going anywhere. <laughs> None of this stuff is going anywhere once we put it in its resin bath. Um, so this is going to look amazing. I really can't wait to show it to you. I'm just going to outline my frame here. You can see that after this gold line, oops, wrecked my fingernail. Um, after this gold line, it's all natural Lake Superior stone. So I've, I've created like a, a framed in piece of artwork, but the rest of the stone is its natural, natural beauty. So we can appreciate that as well. While that's having a resin bath, I'm going to show you some beautiful stuff at my desk. This is a color changing, color shifting scarab. Both the background and the scarab changes color when you shift it under certain lights. Here's a dotted set of lilies on a color shifting background as well. It shifts from bright green to teal. This one, you guys know you've seen my Zentangle dragonflies before. This one is one of my favorites and the colors in the background are to die for. They are so beautiful and they shift perfectly with that dragonfly. And hummingbirds, yet another one of my favorite things to create. Uh, and once again, I was missing dots. So I created a dotted hummingbird and a dotted rose. This is also color shifting background from green to gold to maroon. Looks super nice with that dotted rose though. And are you ready? It's coming. Here it is. First of all, I have to appreciate the background. It looks fabulous. Those colors in the background 
are beautiful and brilliant and they're like a rainbow and that really brought out the color of the mushrooms and the grass and it all looks quite magical I do say so myself I want to know what you guys think of these magical mushrooms let me know if you're going to paint some what colors are you going to try are you going to choose similar colors for your background using watercolor I want to know so leave comments below. I will respond to you the best I can. Here's a still image for you so you can see it as well. Uh, I hope you guys have had fun. I'm glad to be back. I will have more coming soon. And keep an eye out, don't forget, for the watercolor binder tutorial. I love you guys.